Hello everyone, and welcome back to lecture six of our introductory course to quantum computing. Today, we'll be talking about the final quantum mechanical phenomena that allow quantum computers to gain quantum advantage over classical computers. And this phenomena is interference. So first, we need to talk about qubits and how they embody wave-particle duality. So in essence, qubits exhibit properties of both particles and waves similar to electrons. Interference is a property of a wave, and because, super, and because qubits can have properties of both waves and particles, they interfere with each other as well. And this phenomenon allows us to uh, calculate problems a lot faster on quantum computers. There are two main types of interference. The first is constructive interference, where the resulting wave is amplified. The second type of interference is destructive interference, and in this case, the resulting wave is diminished. So basically, how we use interference in quantum computers is that we use constructive interference to amplify the results that we want, and we use destructive interference to diminish the results that we do not want in order to get back the correct result with around 99.9999% chance of correctness. So what is the significance of interference? Firstly, states of a superposition in a qubit can interfere with each other. And as a result, as mentioned on the previous slide, we can use constructive interference to amplify quantum states that we want, and we can use destructive interference to diminish quantum states that we do not want. As a result, quantum interference can lead to quantum speedup as we can amplify the states that we want to almost 100% certainty and diminish the quantum states that we do not want to almost 0%. One of the most prevalent applications of quantum interference in an algorithm is within Grover's algorithm. We'll take a look at Grover's algorithm for the rest of the lecture and I'll go over what it is and how it take, uses interference to take a quantum advantage over classical search algorithms. Okay, so let's go over an overview of Grover's algorithm first. Grover's algorithm is a quantum search algorithm designed to improve upon classical search algorithms, as mentioned on the previous slide. It will search an unsorted list of size n for a desired value. It uses interference within the algorithm to amplify the index of the value in a list that we want and diminishes the indexes that we do not want. And the prerequisite of this algorithm is that we already know the value that we're looking for and that it exists in the list. First, in step one, we initialize all of the qubits into a superposition. So in the picture below, we can see that, say, we have a list of size four and we first just set all of these, the probability of collapsing into each state as equal. So you can see that all the bars are of equal height, which represents that they are all of equal probability of collapsing into when measured. Step two, we apply a quantum oracle to the quantum state to find the position of the value that we are looking for and then invert its state around zero. So a quantum oracle, just think of it as a magic box that will tell us, in this case, uh, where the position of the value that we're looking for is. After this, we invert the value around, the, around zero in order to prepare the whole quantum state to uh, undergo interference. Step three, we amplify the state that we want and diminish the states that we do not want. So in the previous step, we already found out using the quantum oracle which state we want to amplify and which states we do not want to amplify and want to diminish instead. So in this step, we can diminish the probability of collapsing into all of the states that are still positive and amplify the probability of collapsing into the state that is still negative. And the negative doesn't matter in this case as we're able to reinvert the uh, reinvert this value around zero and make it positive again. And we'll see this in the next step. So in step four, we reinvert the quantum, we reinvert the inverted quantum state. So we bring the already negative quantum state back to positive, and as we can see, 
we already have a higher probability of collapsing into the, in this case, the third index of our list. And this is good as we have used interference in order to amplify the probability of collapsing into the state that we want and diminish the probability of collapsing into the state that we do not want. Finally, in step five, we repeat steps two to four in order to continuously amplify the state that we want and diminish the state that we do not want. So in the end, we ideally would want to have a scenario where we have a 99.99999% chance of collapsing into the state that we want and a basically 0% chance that we uh, collapse into the state that we do not want. And in this way, we've used interference to essentially guarantee that we find the index of the value of a, that we're looking for in a list. Now, this was just a very simple explanation of Grover's algorithm, and I encourage all of you to further explore Grover's algorithm if you're interested. Other things like the quantum oracle and uh, more can be further explored as they're quite complicated, and you can definitely go more in depth within them. However, I'll just end our quick introduction to Grover's algorithm here. So that's it for today. I hope that today you guys can understand that how we can use interference to gain a quantum advantage over some classical algorithms using, for example, Grover's algorithm. In our next lecture, we'll be talking about quantum circuits. So stay tuned for that and have a nice day, guys.